what's going on gang this is the action feature at channel i'm chris and i have a tgix review for you today and it is going to be a weird one it's a creature feature and this is 1987's blue monkey uh known by a couple other titles this is directed by william fruitt starring uh steve rails back in john vernon a canadian flick so pretty fun this was just put out by code red this was sent to me for review so thank you for that and this was my first time watching it i think correct me if i'm wrong this this was not was this released on dvd because um i know that it was on uh tape and now it has the blu-ray treatment we have a couple different covers here so this cover is kind of strange uh very juicy looking guy he has some some liquids coming out of his head the tagline on the slip is they breed they hatch they kill maybe it's just a phase they're going through mm -hmm. the original title for this movie was green monkey it was named blue monkey and uh here's another title insect they rise out of nothing they think they kill so um that kind of looks like the creature that we have in the movie and then if we check out the alternate art, this was actually the art that was on the VHS tape that I've seen. And this is, uh, we have some slutty looking nurses that are running away from the monster. These nurses were not in the movie that I can tell. I don't think that that's the actresses. So um, just some slutty looking nurses running away from a big uh, fly looking dude. The tagline here is there's a bad bug going around. So I guess there is. The discard's the same as the one on the slip. So um, there you go. There's a look at the artwork. Just wanted to showcase that because it's known by a couple different names. Another name it's known by is Invasion of the Body Suckers. So um, out of all of those titles, I think that Insect is the most fitting. Blue Monkey was said once in the movie and it was really, it had nothing to do with anything going on. So I'll talk a little bit about the plot, no spoilers, and uh, see where we go from there. The movie opens in like a beautiful greenhouse like someone's personal greenhouse and we have this like weird old lady that's talking to her plants and she turns a radio on for her plants a jam box and uh, she's a crazy old plant lady and she is uh, later on she like is talking to her handyman and I guess he was like fixing something for her and they're just like a cute quirky little like couple even though they're not really a couple they have a date on Friday so uh, the lady's Marwella and the old guy is named Fred. So as Fred is trying to mack on Marwella, he pricks his finger on this strange plant that, I mean, it looked like a drooping like iris to me or something, I don't know. But she was like, she told some story about it, like, oh yeah, it's some plant from this region, like exotic, like it's some exotic plant, like rare. And he like touches it and like immediately pricks his finger and is like, ow, you know, it takes a couple steps and then passes out like collapses in her driveway and you know old fred has to go to the hospital at that point the finger looks pretty weird that he pricked on the thing and marwella goes to the hospital and she's like oh it's my flower that he pricked his finger on and the nurses just do not care one bit pretty realistic you know they're like oh whatever get out of here so you know he's pretty much deteriorating pretty quickly and at the hospital it's like a typical hospital scene where everybody's bustling around and as Fred is sitting here like, you know, comatose because he got his finger pricked, right next to him, these uh, two cops come in and I think that one of the cops was maybe shot or something, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, partners, some partners come in and the one cop that was not shot was Steve Railsback. Steve Railsback plays Jim, the detective. His partner's name was Oscar, was the character. So he's laying there and then as they're like kind of tending to Oscar, uh, Fred, you know, over there with, with his plant problems, Fred like regurgitates like it looks like a writhing white turd. Like it's, it, at first it looks kind of like a banana. So that was pretty gross. Um, but somehow he's still alive after puking up this, um, I guess it's supposed to be like a larva or a caterpillar or something. Definitely didn't look like one, but I, I don't know. It was disgusting, but it didn't give me the, uh, the impression that it was a caterpillar. They take the worm to like this lab to, you know, inspect it and see what's up with it. Like, what is this thing? And it was like a typical hospital, like, oh, I've never seen anything like this. This is, this is remarkable. A nurse tries to cut it. And first of all, like this green ooze starts coming out of it. And then she tries to cut it again. And there's like electrical sparks fly out of it and uh, they cover it up. Um, 
you know, they cover it with like a jar or something and just leave it there. Throughout these scenes, they're like talking about the hospital and of course, you know, it's an old hospital. It's the old abandoned mental institution. So it was a mental hospital and now it is a regular hospital. And uh, I guess there's like a labyrinth of tunnels underneath. And for some reason, this old decrepit hospital also has like a very high-tech state-of-the-art, one-of-a-kind laser beam in it. A uh, thing looks like the Large Hadron Collider, which, uh, by the way, is being fired back up again very soon in 2022. So that's something to look forward to. Um, pretty sure that the facility that LHC is housed in is a little more state-of-the-art than this janky looking uh, rundown mental hospital. Then we meet John Vernon's character and his whole point, he is the hospital director and he tells us that he can't have any negative publicity for the hospital, they can't get word out about this bug and all this unknown stuff because they can't have negative press, compromise the laser project. So, you know, politics. So this one-of-a-kind bug that they stuck in a glass and left there uh, is being guarded by a nurse, but one of the nurse's co-workers comes by and like, hey, let, let's smoke some weed. And she's like, I gotta watch this bug. And he's like, oh, it's not going anywhere. So of course she goes to smoke weed because who wouldn't? It's Canada. So there's this group of four sick kids in the hospital. One is in a neck brace. The other kid, like the main kid who is so annoying, like he's like, oh, I got leukemia. And it's like, ah. I know that I'm supposed to like you, but I really don't because you're super annoying. The main kid takes this, they're like, oh, check out this bug, let's feed it. So they take the lid off that's containing the super bug, like mystery creature. This kid takes some random jar off a shelf and pours it all over this bug. And then it starts like glowing bright blue. And the jar said NAC5. A nurse later tells us that NAC stands for nucleic acid clarifier which is a growth promoter in this movie so uh he, he basically puts miracle grow on the bug so now that the nurse and her co-worker friend are like good and high they come back and they're like oh well obviously let's have sex in this uh room that i'm guarding this bug in and just as things are getting good the bug you know ruins it all bugs a real boner killer he swoops down on him messes up their fun time and uh who knows what happens to them i won't spoil it whenever the bug attacks him it's like this weird like pov thing coming down at them and uh, you don't really get a good look at the bug then but you certainly do later the next scene is like learning that everybody is catching the same symptoms that Fred had, like all the paramedics that brought him there and people in the hospital. So obviously whatever Fred has is contagious and for that reason all of the nurses and doctors basically leave the hospital except for our few main characters. There's one hot nerdy nurse that looks like, you know, a sexy teacher or something and she, I think her name is Judith, so she's left behind. And then basically the one other nurse that's the main person that's macking on Steve Rails back. And that's pretty much the hospital staff, those two and the director. So a sample of the bug gets to some research facility and the research facility is like, oh my God, this is like such bad news, blah, blah, blah. And they tell the government to shut it down, you know, full quarantine on this place, lock it down, nobody's in or out. So the government shows up and they create a perimeter. Reminds me of like the crazies. Um, <laughs> they're like armed. At one point somebody try tries to climb out of a window and they get gunned down right on the hospital lawn. So, you know, very, very excessive government reaction to uh, an unknown illness. What I don't get, and I don't know if it was ever explained, was Fred pricked his finger and then obviously somehow that inseminated him with some sort of a larva which came out of his mouth, a la alien. But why are other people catching it? That's what I don't understand. Like, why is the sickness spreading to other people? Like, is it like an airborne larva or something? Or, you know, all these other people aren't pricking their finger on the plant. So what what is the cause of that? They never really explained that. Another thing about the people getting sick there was a handful of patients and the kids and, you know, there were people that were getting really sick and then there were people that weren't getting sick. But then uh, Marwella was in the hospital 
and there was this like little old lady that she was friends with there this like blind lady and she was like probably the best character in the whole thing she just had like some whiskey or something and they were just getting drunk the whole time so they didn't catch it and you know i don't think it's any big spoiler because it really didn't have anything to do with the plot but they discovered that marwella and this old lady didn't get sick even though they were in close proximity to fred and the reason being because they were like smashed so alcohol stops the toxin from moving through your body which doesn't really make sense because alcohol is a toxin but whatever so are you implying that all the children and the nurses that also didn't get sick had alcohol in their system or how does that work i don't really get why some people got sick and some didn't so obviously we have we have a detective we have a nurse we have the hospital director you know we have the weird military outside we need an entomologist to tell us more about this bug so the one of the nurses says oh i know an entomologist they call him up they bring him in i guess before the military got there and locked everything down and uh the entomologist the whole time is just saying oh this is fascinating blah 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 blah. this thing can lay five to six hundred eggs and oh the only insect that i know that looks like this does this and oh this in insect is uh a hermaphrodite and it, it it's weird that you know it talks about the insect having both male and female organs and then somehow the insect splits into two and the male part of the of the insect begins protecting the female i don't really know how they explained that but they had an entomologist character to explain it to us so i'll believe him because i trust the science but there was some really good suspense in it i will say that um whenever you did see the bug and you got to see it a lot towards the end whenever there was like a chase scene and stuff it looked really good and the chase scenes were pretty suspenseful so um there was that there was a part where whenever some people are hiding there was a lot of suspense there it was pretty pretty good suspense in the movie another like random character that got introduced was a pregnant woman and her um overbearing husband and I, I have no idea why they were in this. Like, they just show up kind of in, like, the third act. And it's just like, why are you here? I just feel like more often than not, movies that take place in hospitals have just, like, a token pregnancy in them for the sake of, oh, this is so complicated. Somebody's pregnant. Let's throw that blue monkey wrench in here. The rest of the movie is basically, like, Steve Rails back and the kid trying to find the bug and kill the female because I guess the male has like impenetrable you know exoskeleton the kid like I said before was so annoying he's the one that fed the uh the insect the growth promoter I, I think that he's supposed to be like you know like Newt in Aliens but he just sucks like Newt was cool like she was awesome and this kid is just like a little bastard. And where Blue Monkey comes into play is whenever the kids are all exploring the underground like labyrinth of tunnels underneath this former mental hospital, the kids are like, what do you think we'll find down here? Probably a blue monkey. And I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? Like, I, I really can't fathom, you know, it's like, we're gonna name it Blue Monkey. Say you're gonna find a blue monkey. Like, okay. Steve Railsback does a lot of running in the uh, in the last act of this. He has uh, great cardio, obviously. The music in it was really good. I thought that it was fitting. If you pop in the Code Red Blu-ray on the menu screen, you get like a little um, a little preview of the music, and it's very frantic and suspenseful. And like the way that it's so frantic, just kind of was reminiscent of an insect. I felt that it was very fitting, so that was pretty cool. This movie was filmed in Ontario, Canada, and uh, the credits I, <laughs> the credits thanked Jim for his greenhouse, which I was very, very jealous of. I was like, that is a beautiful greenhouse. Most of this did take place in the hospital, so um, not very many views of that really cool greenhouse, just the very beginning. I thought Blue Monkey was a pretty good uh, homage to like low budget 50s creature features and stuff like that, but I have to also mention that in 1986, uh, Aliens was released, as was uh, Cronenberg's The Fly. So, you know, I don't know how fast this movie was produced, but um, it had a lot of similarities to both Aliens and The Fly. The monster itself looked a lot like The Fly, 
and um, the whole premise of like the chase scenes and like the thing with the kid and like Newt definitely reminded me of Aliens. So, and plus um, there's a scene where there's like sacks, like the egg sacks for the for the creature, really reminded me a lot of Aliens. So that was, you know, maybe they borrowed a little bit from that too. I thought this was pretty solid. You know, if you are into Canucksploitation, you know, there you go. They don't say, uh, they don't say sorry too much. So that's, that's missing. But um, I found it, I found it very fun. There were some really good characters, but there was also a lot that left me puzzled. Like, you know, why is this pregnant woman here? You know, what is the deal with these kids? There was a lot that I was just like, what the hell? What the hell? You know, and like I said, it was kind of slow paced and the runtime is approximately 96 minutes. So for a 96 minute movie, I was just like, there was a lot that felt like it was like kind of dragging. But as I say that, you know, there was a lot of really good things. The effects were actually pretty good, um, shockingly good. I saw some clips of the VHS. So the tape was super, super dark. Like I mentioned that this had dark parts, like whenever they're in the labyrinth and the, in the hospital catacombs, those dark scenes were nothing compared to the tape because the tape was like you couldn't even see it it was just like you might as well be closing your eyes and imagining it because it was like a black screen this you could make out like edges and stuff for the most part sometimes you could make out um you know features on the creature the monster um but there were also some scenes that were lit pretty well so um it's definitely gonna be an improvement on the tape so if you have any interest in this, this is the format that you want for sure if you actually want to view the movie and not just listen to the thing. Even though, you know, like I said, the music was very nice. It actually says on the special features, HD transfer from original uncut 35 millimeter negatives with extensive color correction. So I'll vouch for that. It looks very, very good. Um, and then trailers is the other special feature. Also from the excerpt on the back, I wanted to give you a chance to check that out. The last line is code red, now brings you this big bug B movie, also known as insect in glorious HD, which I'm a sucker for glorious HD, so very cool. Many thanks to code red for sending this to me for review. And uh, I know that a lot of Ians are fans of creature features, probably way more so than I am. Let me know if you've seen this or if you are planning on checking it out. I think that this was worth checking out just to see Steve Railsbeck's character alone because he was awesome. Many thanks to you for checking this out and come back next time and see what we're talking about. I will see you next time.